Feminine energy is a really interesting energy because it doesn't come naturally to a lot of us. A lot of us connect very naturally with our masculine energy. And so in order to embody feminine energy, we have to focus on embracing and making conscious decisions to learn more about it. Welcome to my channel. If you're new, my name is Jade and I'm super excited to have you here today. I have spent so much time studying feminine energy and a lot of effort in order to connect with my own feminine energy. So in today's video, I'm gonna explain the difference between feminine and masculine energy, and I'm gonna give you five tips on how to embrace your feminine energy. So I felt like I should start the video off by saying femininity and feminine energy definitely aren't the same thing. Femininity is a way to describe something or someone, usually alluding to someone wearing a pink ruffly dress or wearing a lot of makeup, doing their hair a certain way. But feminine energy is this energy that lives within all of us that's very healing, creative, sensual, intuitive. It has a lot to do with our emotions. So you do not have to be super feminine in order to embody feminine energy. So now that I got that out of the way, I think it'll be helpful to explain the difference between feminine and masculine energy. Most people by default are in their masculine energy because a lot of us are living in survival mode. Feminine energy is that stepping out of survival mode, getting comfortable with the energy that flows within us that a lot of us actually push down. So feminine energy is this flowing and state of being sort of energy, while masculine energy is this state of action and doing. Feminine energy is very grounded and relaxed. It allows things to be and it finds contentment with the way things are. Masculine energy is this very focused energy that is always planning the next step. It's always trying to find a new goal, trying to achieve something else, trying to change things. And whereas feminine energy is very intuitive, a lot of the decisions made out of feminine energy is very heart-based. It's about how you are feeling. This energy is very sensual and sexual and it's about being really in touch with the emotional side of things. Whereas masculine energy is going to be a lot more head-based. It's going to be about thinking and being logical. A lot of decisions made out of masculine energy is going to be thought-based, thinking about how this is going to work out, what the next step might be. This energy is very assertive and direct, and it's very action-based. These energies work effortlessly in unison together. And that's why balancing the energies are very, very important. It's not about being in fully in your masculine energy or fully in your feminine energy. If someone is fully in their masculine energy, this person is going to neglect their emotions. This is how people get really depressed in this really deep hole because they've been numbing their emotions for so long that they can't allow themselves to feel because it's so overwhelming. Whereas if someone is very in their feminine energy, this energy can become very stagnant. This person might not want to achieve any goals because they're fine with just laying out in the sun every day. By balancing these energies, you get a great balance of feeling and flowing and attracting. And then you get this balance of doing and achieving, and it works so perfectly together. Learning more about feminine energy makes us more comfortable to experience it. So I wanted to share a few tips about how I've personally embraced feminine energy and have experienced a completely different life by doing so while it comes to career, especially when it comes to dating. And I think these five tips that I have to share will be super helpful to you as well. So my first tip in order to embrace feminine energy is going to be learn how to set boundaries and learn how to be confident in keeping your boundaries. Feminine energy is not forceful. When you're in your feminine energy, you're not going to force someone to act a certain way. You're not going to tell them, you need to call me or 
I want you to start acting like this instead of the way you're acting. That's very masculine. So feminine energy is about what you're going to allow into your life. So instead of saying, you need to call me, someone in their feminine energy is going to say, hey, when you don't call me, it makes me feel upset. I would really love for our communication to be more consistent. It's a lot more feeling based. So then they might say, I don't like to feel like this. So I'm going to start talking to you less if this continues. It's about putting that boundary and someone who respects your boundaries will say, wow, I don't want you to feel that way. And then they're going to make changes according to what you allow into your life. Feminine energy is very vulnerable. So it's really important that you protect your energy. Putting boundaries up is going to protect your energy. You don't have to fight people. You don't have to force things. You just put a boundary up and say, this is what I'm going to allow into my life. And anything outside of that is not going Going to be a part of my life. But the one thing that's really important with these boundaries is you have to be confident in them. You have to uphold the boundaries in respect for yourself. If you're always letting people cross your boundaries, then it's pointless to even put them up. And if someone keeps crossing your boundaries, that person is not worth your energy and they have no business being a part of your life anyway. So number one tip is get confident in setting boundaries and actually uphold them because it is important in order to allow your feminine energy to feel safe and to flow freely. My second tip is to actively work on healing. Get to know your emotional side. In order to understand your emotions, you genuinely have to feel your emotions. And for me, this meant becoming sober and celibate for a very long time. That way I wasn't unconsciously numbing my feelings. That way I could genuinely feel them and get in touch with how I was feeling. So this tip is really important when it comes to embracing your feminine energy because feminine energy is all about feeling and allowing your feelings to actually flow. This is a very difficult step because a lot of us have pushed down a lot of feelings and when you start making efforts towards feeling them, it can be extremely overwhelming. So when I talk about healing, I'm talking about shadow work, inner child work, attachment style healing. So shadow work is learning these unconscious behaviors that we do, whether that means getting anxious or avoiding problems, or even if it means shutting down or exploding. A lot of us, we don't understand why we do that. We just do it. So learning why we do this and where it's coming from is going to be so healing and that actually helps you embrace your feminine energy a lot more. Getting to the root of these problems also connects with inner child work. A lot of these things that we do unconsciously is rooted in our childhood. A lot of us have gone numb to feeling excitement and this youthful lightness towards life and connecting with our inner child is going to be so healing towards that. These all kind of go hand in hand as well as learning what our attachment style is. There's three different attachment styles whether it be anxious attachment, secure attachment, or avoidant attachment. Learning which one you are I had learned that naturally I had an anxious attachment style where I had maybe experienced abandonment issues and instability in my childhood. Whereas now in my adulthood, if I experience any sort of instability in my dating life as maybe someone just took a couple hours to respond to me, I just boom, go into this anxious feeling of, oh my god, are they going to text me back? Are we breaking up? Do they not love me anymore? And that was all rooted within my childhood trauma. So then I started to learn about secure attachment and I made efforts towards becoming secure. And don't get me wrong, that's not easy. That has been so healing for me. So I've, I've worked on healing. It's been healing for me. It's been healing for my dating life. It's healing to my relationship. Whereas avoidant attachment style, when something arises, it becomes overwhelming. So they just run away from it, shut down, avoid. And learning 
which one you are and then actively working towards a secure attachment style where you know everything is going to be okay where you can trust yourself you can trust the people that you're dating you can trust your friends and family this is what's really important so prioritize inner work prioritize healing these traumas and different things you may be doing so my third tip is going to be focus on attracting instead of chasing i'm sure you've heard the very popular mantra that says i do not chase i attract everything i want flows to me this is a very feminine mantra feminine energy is about putting out the energy of what you want and then allowing yourself to attract it and receive it Whereas a lot of people who are naturally in their masculine energy, if they want something, they're gonna try to go out and go get it and chase after it. But in my experience, I've learned that the harder you chase something, the faster it runs away from you. Think about a lion trying to catch its prey. The harder it's chasing it, the faster that prey is going to run. And yes, the lion might get it, but afterwards that lion is probably very tired. So feminine energy is magnetic. It's attractive. We are going to allure our dreams to come to us. And we are going to feel like we did it so effortlessly. Because if we're putting out the vibration of what we want, then we will attract it. That goes a lot into the law of attraction, which I am very into. So if you are interested in the law of attraction then check out some of my other videos but basically that means that the energy that you're putting out the vibrations that you're putting out is what you are going to receive so you don't have to work endlessly towards going out and chasing your goals you can entice your goals to come to you and you can attract them and when i talk about attracting it goes hand in hand with being comfortable with receiving you can attract something all you want but if you do not receive it then it will not be yours so you have to learn how to get comfortable with receiving and a lot of people who have been in their masculine energy that feels extremely uncomfortable to them. And I'm talking about receiving help, receiving gifts, receiving anything. I remember when I was heavily in my masculine energy, I was moving, I was moving by myself. I was carrying all of this stuff downstairs. And this guy outside said, hey, I see you've been carrying everything. Why don't you let me come in and help you? Or why don't you let me help you carry this table down the stairs? I'm like, no, no, I got it. I got it. Don't worry. You know, in my head, I'm like, I don't want to inconvenience this person. But genuinely, if I was in my feminine energy, I would have said, oh, wow, I would love your help. So we have to be comfortable with receiving or in your dating life, allowing the more masculine energy to provide for you, allowing them to pay for the date. Being comfortable with receiving is so important towards embracing feminine energy and attracting what we want instead of chasing what we want and then providing for other people. And when you start receiving, that's going to make attracting a lot easier because you're telling the universe, I'm worthy of receiving this, I'm worthy of attracting this, and it's going to allow the momentum to keep going, and it's going to allow that flow of attracting to be more consistent. My fourth tip on embracing feminine energy is learn to trust your intuition. How you feel is your greatest indicator on how something is going to affect your energy. Whether something is going to be a positive experience or something is going to be a negative experience. A feminine's superpower is their intuition. Your intuition is directly based on how you feel. So learning that gut feeling that you get and learning how to trust it instead of overthinking it and becoming too logical, that can definitely cloud your judgment when it comes to your intuition. Learning how to drop into the feeling of how a situation is instead of overthinking it is something that is very feminine. So stop overthinking and trust your gut because your intuition never lies. Then my biggest tip on how to embrace using your intuition is going to be just practice using your intuition in very small ways. Whether it means just deciding something to eat or making a plan for your day, instead of, you know, jumping to big decisions on using your intuition, start out small, get comfortable with it. Think about how it makes you feel, not about all of the possibilities of everything that could happen next or this or this or that, starting to overthink it. 
If you want to be in your feminine energy, think about how something makes you feel. And once you get comfortable with using your intuition, then you will be comfortable making bigger life decisions using your intuition without overthinking it. My fifth and final tip on embracing feminine energy is to let go and flow. Feminine energy is all about being in this state of just being. Finding contentment with exactly how things are. Having faith that things are going to work out, that you are exactly where you need to be, and that things are always working in your favor, so you have nothing to overthink and worry about. This feeling of the unknown is very common when embracing your feminine energy because it's not a controlling energy. You're letting go of control. You're allowing things to flow for you. And that can be very scary for someone who's been in their masculine energy for so long because masculine energy is going to control what happens next. They're going to make an action-based plan on how to control what's going to be the next step. And that can be helpful sometimes, but that's very unhealthy if that's what you're doing all of the time. So embracing the feminine energy of being content with the unknown and allowing yourself to be okay and to have faith in yourself in knowing that you are always in the right position. This is so important when it comes to embracing your feminine energy. I think a lot of us feel like we have the most power when we are controlling and doing, but I wanna remind you that there is so much power in attraction and allowing things to be and allowing yourself to be in a good vibration, even though your masculine side might be under stress and might be wanting to change everything. Tapping into your feminine side and finding consent within is so important and just allowing things to be. Letting go and just flowing with the beat of life tells the universe that I'm not stressed about this. I know everything is going to work out in my favor, therefore everything will work out in your favor. And my biggest tip on doing this, because I know it can be very scary to just let go and allow things to flow, is Get comfortable with meditating. Get comfortable with shutting your mind off because that instantly puts yourself in this state of flow. Quieting your mind and quieting that thinking and overthinking will allow the masculine side to calm and it will allow your feminine side to flow and feel safe. Meditation is very feeling centered. You can allow yourself to feel safely, feel freely. So quieting the mind down, which is very masculine, that's where the masculine energy is in your mind. Quiet your mind down. I know meditation isn't the same for everyone. It has taken me a lot to be able to sit and shut my mind off and just be still like this. That's not the only way you can meditate. You can go for a run and just quiet your mind and go into your body. You can do yoga. Sometimes I go to the gym and just quiet my mind and focus on my body, dropping into my heart space and how I feel. It will really, really help you let go and to flow. Even if it's not for an extremely long amount of time, even if it's for just while you do the dishes, you allow yourself to shut your mind off and be in this calm state. It will allow you to get out of this overthinking, anxious, going crazy in your head, and it will allow you to just feel, let go, and flow. So I know this last tip can be hard, it can be scary, but be patient with yourself and in small ways, learn how to let go and learn how to let life flow. I do also think it's important to mention that feminine energy isn't about these toxic gender roles of making men become emotionless and take care of us as women. That is completely opposite of what feminine energy is. Everyone, no matter your gender, will benefit from embracing feminine energy. We all have it within ourselves and embracing the the emotional side of things is so important for everyone to learn, not just women. It's important to learn which energy feels more natural to us. For me, feminine energy feels so much more natural. 
Honestly, I could sit outside eating fruits every day and not have to achieve a single thing in that day. And doing that is actually very toxic. I have to lean a little bit more towards my masculine energy. That way I can film videos for you. That way I can achieve goals that I have. And then someone who feels more natural in their masculine energy, it is very important to lean towards your feminine energy. That way you can express your emotions, feel your emotions, and allow things to be sometimes. So the the goal isn't to be all the way in my feminine energy. The goal is to learn how to embrace this energy. That way we get a balance of yin and yang. That way we can be a balanced individual. The main goal is always to be balanced. And that way we can find balance within our relationships as well. I know that when I was dating in my very masculine energy, I was attracting a lot of wounded masculine people or a lot of men who were more in their feminine energy. And learning how to fall into my feminine energy, which is so much more comfortable for me to be in, has allowed my dating life to become completely different. I now attract masculine men that I feel so much safer with. I feel like I can relax. Allowing myself to be in my feminine energy has allowed me to attract someone who is naturally more masculine and who is more healthy because I am more healthy. At the same time though, if I am way too feminine, that becomes toxic because then I would attract someone who is all the way in their masculine energy and who is unable to care for my emotions or to be emotional with me as well. So understanding that Yes, one will be more natural to you, but the goal should be to find a balance. So please, if you take anything from this video, just remember that it is not about becoming 100% feminine energy. That's very unhealthy. My goal is to help you find balance between your feminine and masculine energy by learning more about the feminine energy that is a lot more unnatural to us. If you try out any of these tips, let me know in the comments below on how they may have changed or affected your life. I feel very lucky to have experienced embracing my feminine energy. That way I can share these tips with you. I appreciate you watching this video. I've had a great time talking about feminine energy. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.